Welcome to this tutorial where I'll be showing you how to fill, stack and cover double barrel cake just like this one. The benefits of building a double barrel cake is that it's very tall so it looks very modern, it gives you a great surface area for decorating and it also gives you double the amount of cake portions for the same diameter size. Now the first step that I always do is to build an internal structure. So I do this by drilling a hole the same size of my wooden dowel into my cake board and it's just so it can sit just like this. You only need one cake board and one dowel. Now the reason why we are building this center dowel structure is because our double barrel cake is very slender and tall and this just stabilizes it and stops it from wanting to tip over. Now I've got some duct tape, some very strong tape, and I'm placing this over the hole on the bottom side of the cake board. So you can see the marble side is the top side. And then I'm gonna fill this with some hot glue. You then want to place your dowel and secure it into the hole with the hot glue before the hot glue sets. You obviously want to make sure this is as straight as possible. The next thing you want to do is to tort your cake. So I'm actually going to slice them into three layers. So it's going to be three layers at the bottom, three layers on top. If you'd like a little bit more of an in-depth look at this particular technique, I've got another video that I'm going to link in my description box for you. It's all about how to tort, fill and stack a perfect buttercream cake. So there's a little bit more detail on all the steps. So for this tutorial, I'm concentrating more on the actual double barrel stacking for you. So after torting, slicing your cake, you actually want to trim the edges. Now this is an optional step. I always like to do it as I find that my clients in the past have always preferred cake without crusts on the side. So this is an extra step that I recommend and I like to do, but again, it's optional. So you want to do this for two different cakes. So I've already done this for one of them and I've done another one here. So you want two cakes sliced into three layers. Now it's time to construct our cake and for that we need frosting. I'm using Swiss meringue buttercream. I've got a fantastic recipe that I'll link in my description box for you. It's a free recipe. It's one that I give away to all of my tutorials on the Sugar Sugar Cake School. So you just want to use a number 12 nozzle. It's just a round nozzle or you can just snip the end of your piping bag. So we're going to start with a little bit of buttercream and I'm going to thread through my first layer of cake. If some of it pops out, you can just squash it back in. It is a little better if you can cut your dowel at an angle. This way it makes it easier to pierce the cake layers through. At this point, you can syrup your cakes. Otherwise, you can just go straight on with your buttercream like so. This is a very moist cake that I'm using, so I'm not going to actually syrup my cakes. If not, it will be too wet. So you'll see what I've done before is I actually piped a circle all around the edge of the cake and then I filled it with buttercream in the middle. The reason why I do this is because it's a great guide for me to get even layers of buttercream between all of my cake layers. So this is a great tip if you're quite new to cake decorating or if you struggle to get the frosting all the same thickness. So again I'm going to pipe a ring all around the edge of my cake. This is called a dam in some cake circles and then I'm going to fill it with frosting. This is also great if you're filling it with a softer frosting like maybe if you're using a curd or something in the middle. Piping that ring of frosting just helps keep it in the center of the cake rather than oozing out. But for me this time I'm really just using it as a guide for me to know where to bring my buttercream up to. So as you can see I'm loading it up in the middle but I'm being careful to just spread it out so that it is flush with the top rim of that ring of buttercream that I piped all the way around. So I've got three layers of cake here and at this point I'm going to dowel with some straws. Now you can use bubble tea straws or just regular straws. I got mine from I think from Ikea I think. So I'm just going to cut it just where it is flush with the top surface of the cake. You don't want it too short and you don't want it too tall. So just snip it so that it is flush with the top surface of the cake. You can use three. I'm going to go with four. Now the purpose of these dowels is to make sure that the weight of the upper half of the cake doesn't squash the bottom half of the cake. Now that I've got my dowels on there, I'm going to add a little bit of buttercream. It doesn't have to be a full layer. It's just enough to stick this cake board. Now this cake 
plastic board it has to have a hole in it so that it can thread through our middle center dowel and you also want it to be one inch smaller than the diameter of the cake that you are using once you've got that done just add a little bit of buttercream just so the next layer of cake can adhere to it now I'm going to reserve what was the bottom of the cake and I'm gonna flip it over so that the bottom is going to be reserved for my top this makes it easier for me to get a really smooth crumb free top section for my cake now we're going to just repeat everything that we've done before so it's just pipe a ring of buttercream a fillet and stack your cake and you keep going until you get to the very top so I've got my last piece of cake that I'm going to place on top here and now we're going to do what we call a crumb coat and this is a very thin layer of buttercream and it's just to seal all of the crumbs in so that we can apply our final layer of buttercream and get that really smooth with beautiful sharp edges so you can choose to apply a buttercream with a piping bag or a palette knife it's really your choice and I want to smooth down the top and get this very very thin once I've got the top fairly smooth and thin then I want to get to the sides and all I want to do is to make sure that the entire cake is covered in a very thin layer of buttercream it does not have to be very smooth or perfect remember the goal at this stage is just to get the entire cake covered sealed in buttercream and to make sure that the layer of buttercream for this one is very thin it kind of should look by the end of this step like a semi naked cake once your sides are relatively smooth then you can just bring the excess on the top edge in and I do this by using my palette knife and bringing it inwards towards myself just to neaten up the edges this can be placed into the fridge to chill for approximately 30 minutes or more just to get it nice and cold before we apply our final layer of buttercream now I've got some Swiss meringue buttercream here it's really delicious you can get the recipe in my description box below I colored it with some pink gel food colors now the motion that I'm using for the top is sort of this back and forth way figure of eight and whilst turning the turntable this helps me to get it very smooth now once you've got it quite level you actually want to scrape it off and in between each scrape you want to remove the excess buttercream this helps you to get a very flat smooth layer on top again if you like to watch a little bit more detail on how to cover a cake perfectly I'll add the link to my perfect buttercream cake tutorial down in the description box once I've got the top section beautifully smooth and flat this is when I put lots and lots of buttercream around the sides now you want to make sure that the top is really smooth and flat before doing this so this is my little process and it'll make sense when you get to the very end of the video so now your goal at this stage is to cover the entire sides of the cake with lots and lots of buttercream you want it to be a really thick layer because we're actually going to use a scraper and scrape this all away and that's what's going to give you a really sleek smooth surface so be really generous and I know it might seem like you're putting a lot of buttercream on at this stage but this is what you have to do to make it easier to scrape off later on so I'm using an acrylic straight scraper like this and I got mine online you can just search clear acrylic cake scraper just google it and I'm sure you'll find many many options to buy them online so I'm going to do really long even scrapes and in between each scrape I want to clean the scraper of any excess buttercream so you'll get a lot of build up as you can see take your time with this process I did speed up this video so that it's a quicker video for you to watch on YouTube so just be aware that this is a sped up video now in between the scrapes you'll start to notice craters or holes in your cake areas that require the filling of more buttercream so before I keep scraping I'm going to add buttercream to these areas if I don't do this and if I keep scraping I'm eventually going to hit cake again and I'm gonna get a semi naked cake which is not what we want here so once I've added more buttercream to fill in the gaps and the holes I'm going to scrape again now I'm doing this very gradually I'm doing lots and lots of thin scrapes and doing this will get you to a really polished finish 
at the end. Remember also very important to clean the scraper in between each scrape. As you progress, you'll notice your cake getting smoother and smoother and smoother. And so as you get to the, I guess the end of this process, this is when you want to start being really careful with your scrapes so that you end up with a really beautiful polished finished. Now you want to keep your scraper completely flush at a 90 degree angle with your cake board. It helps if your cake board is really smooth without any bumps. If your cake board is bumpy or has ridges, this makes this process really hard and you'll get lots of lines in your cake. Now once you've finished that and you've got a really smooth surface, you want to chill the entire cake for at least one hour. And this is when we'll do my secret step, which is to use a paring knife dipped in hot boiling water. You want to get that little knife really hot. And this is when you want to cut the edge of the buttercream off. And this is how you get a really sharp buttercream edge really quickly and easily. Now you want to take your time with this process because you don't want to make any mistakes here. If you cut too much off, the top edge of your cake isn't going to be level. So take your time, do this really slowly. Make sure that you go down to eye level of the top edge of your cake. If you're nervous about this, then do what I do, which is I usually cut off less and then I go back a second time and cut more off. Now it is really important that your cake is as cold as it can be when you do this process. If it's soft, then this is actually really difficult to do. So just remember really cold cake, really hot knife. It's a really neat trick for getting super sharp buttercream edges easily and quickly. Now, once you do that step, now we're going to use a very small offset spatula. We're going to dip this in our very hot water. And this is just to completely smooth out and flatten the top edge. Now, it's important to not go crazy at this stage. We're really not refrosting or re-icing the cake. We're just hot knifing the top ever so slightly to get it completely flat and smooth. You want to be careful not to mess around too much with that beautiful sharp edge. So there you have it, a tall, slick, beautiful double barrel cake. It's stable with internal structures and it's ready for decorating. For all recipes and links, check my description box below. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you're not missing out on any new videos. Thank you so much for watching. This is Sugar Sugar Cake School and I'll catch you next time.